Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last session, we were discussing about the effective load on the gear tooth and we have arrived up to the conclusion that the effective load which is there on the gear tooth will consist of service factor, the tangential load acting on the gear tooth as well as the velocity factor. And we also summarized about how to determine the magnitude of the tangential load once the torque is available. So this simple basic formula will be the basis using which you will be able to calculate the tangential force. Then the value of CV, the velocity factor, it will depend on the range of velocity that the gear is now running at. The only question that remains is how to calculate this velocity. So in this case, the V is known as pitch line velocity. Just give me a second, I will put it here for you. So V is known as pitch line velocity and it is given as V equal to pi d dash n upon 60 into 10 raise to 3. Now the question comes why uh, this uh, 10 raise to 3 has been divided because the diameter or the pitch circle diameter that we are considering it is in mm. So in order to convert this velocity from mm per second into meter per second, we need to use this 10 raise to 3. A similar conversion was also observed when we wanted to obtain the value of mt that is torque transmitted from the power which is transmitted. So we need to be careful with the units here. So once the pitch line velocity is obtained, then we can proceed with the gear design. So in the case of gear design, one important aspect comes is that when the load is acting on the gear tooth, as we can see from here, here the PT is the tangential force which is acting on the gear tooth and the gear tooth has a face width of B, it has the base thickness, root thickness of T and H is the height of the gear tooth. So when this kind of loading is there, then we need to consider the design of gear on the basis of beam strength or indirectly we are considering the design of gear against the bending strength. So for this purpose we can use the flexural formula. You can find it in the book. When we convert that flexural formula suitably using the terms, we arrive at one term which is denoted by capital T and its formulation is T square upon 6 HM. So this term is known as Lewis form factor. This term is known as Lewis form factor and as you can see it gives you combined effect of thickness of the tooth, the height of the uh, tooth and module of the tooth. So on the basis of this you can say that if you want the effective load it is given as mb sigma b y where in this case sigma b is the bending stress or the safe bending stress and generally the value of sigma b is taken as ultimate tensile strength of the material of the gear tooth divided by 3. So sig sigma b is SUT by 3 in Newton per mm square. This is the value that we will be always using or you can call it as the endurance limit while you are designing the gear. So it will always be SUT by 3. The value of SUT by 3 will be available from the data book or it will be given in the problem statement. Now the question comes, the question comes is that for the safe design, the bending strength SB of the gear tooth should always be either greater than or equal to the force, the tangential force which is acting on the gear tooth. So it should always be greater than or equal to and that is why you can call the, uh, you can say that SB should be in the least case it should be equal to MB into Sigma B into capital Y. Again the value of this Lewis form factor it will be available from the data table. We don't need to calculate it again and again. It will be based on the number of teeth. It is already available for the standard uh, spur gear and we will be using it henceforth. So the basic understanding is that the beam strength should be 
equal to mb sigma b y but for the safe case if we want to ensure then in that situation there is this limiting condition and i will be mentioning this condition again and again it is that sb should be greater than the effective loading so when we say that it should be greater than the effective load coming on the gear tooth then there should always be a coefficient which should be associated with the p effective so we can say that sp should be equal to p effective multiplied by factor of safety fs this will be the equation that i will be referring to again and again excuse me this will be the equation that i will be referring to again and again during our entire conversation or our entire design process so this simple equation enables us to design the gear other parameters they are already known to us again on the basis of the beam strength there will be a value of module the module with the help of this beam strength can be calculated using this formula that module m i will just put it down here on the basis of beam strength if we want to calculate the module then module m will be equal to 60 into 10 less to 6 divided by pi multiplied by kw which is the power to be transmitted multiplied by the service factor into factor of safety divided by number of teeth the speed of rotation the velocity factor cv the ratio b by m and coupled with this value of sigma b which is suv by 3 and lewis form factor then this entire bracket remember this entire bracket raised to the power 1 by 3 this can be obtained with the help of a very simple comparison between sp as well and its basic formula so i will not put it here just this formula we will be directly using in our numerical statements there is one more aspect with the help of which you can design the gear rather it should also be checked every time you are designing the gear so gear design on the basis of wear strength so the surface of the gear should be strong enough that it will resist the pitting failure so that's why we also need to check the wear strength so wear strength of gear tooth this will be necessary for us so the gear strength of the sorry wear strength of the gear tooth is given as sw is equal to b q d dash p into k so we will sort out what exactly are the individual factors the simple formula we will be using the terms will be splitting out b is the face width that we already know so it will be 10 times the module q is known as ratio of factor it gives us the ratio of the number of teeth on gear divided by summation of number of teeth on gear and pinion so mathematically it is equal to 2zg upon zg plus zp this formula we will be using directly or when you compare this because we know that if we want any peak circle diameter it is equal to mz for example if we want peak circle diameter of the pinion it is equal to mzp and peak circle diameter of the gear it is equal to mzg so this is equal to two times when we replace this value we are actually getting two times d dash g divided by d dash g plus d dash p so again now ratio factor has been sorted the next thing that is necessary is the load stress factor which is denoted by k i'll just put that name here for you so k is known as load stress factor and it depends on properties of individual materials minus tick 
so properties of individual materials which are being used in the gear construction so this will be load stress factor and mathematically it is given as k is equal to sigma c square sin alpha cos alpha multiplied by 1 upon e1 plus 1 upon e2 divided by 1.4 so in this case alpha is the pressure angle sigma c is the surface hardness rating capital e is the modulus of elasticity or young's modulus as we know from our basic strength of materials so e1 corresponds to modulus of elasticity for gear e2 corresponds to modulus of elasticity sorry e1 corresponds to modulus of elasticity for pinion while e2 corresponds to modulus of elasticity for gear so there can be one limiting case one standard case in which both pinion and gear if they are made up of steel let us say both of them they are made up of steel so in this case we can safely assume that the value of e1 or e1 is nothing but e for pinion and it is also equal to e2 or e for gear so in this case let us say if this value is 206000 mega 206000 mega pascal or newton per mm square we know from som that mega pascal and newton per mm square are these same units and if it's a 20 degree pressure angle system furthermore if the surface roughness or so my mistake surface hardness is 0 0.27 on a Brinell hardness scale kg force per mm squared or it is also equal to 0 0.27 we need to convert it into uh, standard system of unit so 0 0.27 multiplied by 9.81 on the scale of Brinell hardness Newton per mm square so when we substitute all of these values in the equation of k what we get is the final value or the simplified expression for k which is generally the case so k becomes 0 0.16 bhn upon 100 bracket squared so this will also be one of the simplified still uh, simplified relations that we will be using while solving the numericals if both the gear and uh, pinion they are made up of steel now when we get to the basic understanding what we want is that for the safe design the value of this wear strength which we have calculated using p q d dash p and k this value should be greater than p effective like i said just in the case of the beam strength the basic logic is that sb should be greater than p effective this simple thing helps us to uh, design the entire gear you don't need to mug up many equations if you understand this simple thing so what we get here is give me a second so the basic understanding or we can say for safe design ultimately wear strength should also be equal to effective load coming on the gear tooth and when we want to remove this sign this greater than sign it means we have to write down the term with a coefficient so sw should be equal to p effective multiplied by factor of safety with only with the help of additional factor of safety we can establish we can create we can use this equal to sign then we already know the value of p effective uh, from our cspt upon cd expression when we substitute all of the quantities when we compare both the sides we can get the value of module the derivation is uh, right now not necessary so module based on wear strength also we can establish so module based on wear strength 
this module the formula will be similar to the module that we evaluated during the beam strength on the basis of your strength it will remain like this 60 into 10 less to 6 divided by pi so kw which is to be transmitted cs into fs divided by only instead of z it will be zp square then np then cv b by m ratio multiplied by q multiplied by k if you remember instead of q and k that there was this y in the in case of beam strength and this entire bracket raised to the power 1 by 3 in this way we can evaluate the module based on the wear strength once we sometimes it might be asked in the numerical so this was the basic that we needed to learn before directly going for the design of the spur gear in the next lecture we will uh, solve one numerical using this fundamental understanding that we just need to have proper face width we need to select minimum number of teeth we need to calculate effective load on gear tooth once we have that p effective see th these are the key formulas whichever i am highlighting once you have this formula immediately everything else will proceed once you practice the numerical you won't need to mug up the things once you solve the numerical by hand so once you have p effective you can go for the comparison yes that might be effective it should be lesser as compared to the beam strength so beam strength should be evaluated once beam strength is evaluated using mb sigma b y yes i mean uh, let me just highlight this formula for you so once beam strength has been evaluated as mb sigma b y uh, and individual parameters determined we can uh, compare again once again with the help of year strength dq dpk and then once you have all of these you can say that the design should be safe or not so we will proceed with the numerical in the next lecture thank you